Welcome to Worship with the Salvation Army, Cardiff Canton. Today, yet another junior soldier joins our ranks as Oliver Keats shares and signs his promise. And as we move inexorably towards Easter, we'll reflect on events which unfolded in the village of Bethany during the days prior to Palm Sunday. But first, here is a song played by our own band and written by Graham Kendrick that reminds us of the path Jesus has taken, first Creator, then crucified and glorified, our Saviour and our example. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and steadfast love. As we worship you on this Sunday in Lent, we thank you for taking the first step, running to meet us, stooping to love us, and in Christ, dying to save us. Give us humble hearts so that today we can hear your voice and be challenged and changed by your word. We pray for people around the world whose lives have been blighted by coronavirus or by the lockdown. We thank you for the health professionals, the carers and scientists. We pray that vaccinations will surpass our expectations and bring this pandemic to an end. Despite the difficulties, keep us faithful to you and give us wisdom and compassion so that we can respond as your people 
to the needs around us. Bless us with your presence in this YouTube hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Oliver, to your online enrolment as a junior soldier in the Salvation Army at Cardiff Canton. We have some other very important people here to support you. There is Mum Claire and there is Sister Ava and there is Dad Craig, I can see. We have Auntie Chrissy here in another window representing the Sunday School. When this goes out, on our Sunday YouTube video. Lots of other people will be able to see you, but you won't be able to see them. So I've asked some that you know to record messages and I'm going to play the messages now. So are you ready yes. to see the messages? Yes. Yes, good. Here's the first one. Hi, Oliver. Um, congratulations on becoming a junior soldier. Um, we hope that you have lots of fun uh, on your special day and um, in the years ahead in sort of getting to know God better. Um, very proud of you and hope to see you soon. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. That was Uncle Craig and Auntie Steph, wasn't it, Oliver? Was it nice to see them? Yeah. yeah. So we've got another message now. This one is from Grandma and Grandad. This is a very exciting day for you, Oliver, and a very proud day for us as we witness you becoming a junior soldier. We know that you have thought carefully about becoming a junior soldier and that you only made the decision when you were ready to do so. You're such a special person and we enjoy our time together when we've had so much fun. You are, I remember your enthusiasm when you were younger and you would be conducting the band from your back seat at the hall. Are you sure the band didn't know who to, who to follow? And then there's those primary items which you took part in. And I remember the many questions you asked about Easter at the senior band meditation evening. Questions that many adults may not even think to ask. I've loved having my grandson in primary and you've been so helpful in so many ways. The primary team have loved watching you grow from the cute, quiet little boy who, when we did the story of the loaves and fishes, kept going to my bag to eat the bread when you thought I wasn't looking and giving Auntie Karen a cheeky smile. 
to the confident, questioning young boy who enjoyed helping with experiments and activities and helping with the younger children. You are loved so very much by all of your family and we love the times when we can talk together, especially when you are telling us about the things you have done. But we want you to remember that God loves you too, so very much, and he will always listen to you when you talk to him. He's always there for you, just as we are. Keep asking questions and learning about him. And so we send our love to you on this special day, Oliver. God bless you. Well done, mate. Is that right that you used to conduct the band? <laughs> yes. Is that true well, that you used to eat bread out of grandma's handbag? Yeah, I I literally forgot about it until she actually just said it. <laughs> <laughs> She's reminded you. That's good. Right. Well, we have one more message. Uh, and this one is from Nana and Grandad. So let's go to that now. We were both so pleased to be able to join you, Oliver, in the meeting today as you make your junior soldiers promise and commitment. It was lovely to know that you'd made your decision to do junior soldiers classes yourself and to sign this promise today. You have a strong army heritage and in taking this step you become the fifth generation Salvationist on both Nana and Grandad's side of the family. What is more important is not the heritage, but how you have learned God's love so far from primary, Sunday school and your family. We hope and pray that you will go on learning more about God's love for you. When we look back, Oliver, we realise Nan and Grandad made their junior soldiers promise over 50 years ago. That must seem so far away from you. Nana and I have lots of favourite verses from the Bible, but we both like the book of Philippians. And there are some words from Philippians chapter 4 that we would like to share with you, which we have taken from the Living Bible. Verse 6 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. So remember to thank God for everything and he will be there for you in every situation. Verse 8 says, Fix your thoughts on what is true and good and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and dwell on the fine good things in others. The Bible verse is so close to the promise you've made today. In your junior soldier's promise you say, I promise to pray, to read my Bible and to lead a life that is in clean in thought, word and deed. Always remember the simplicity of this part of the promise and try to look for the good everywhere. We, we both, both love, love you and will continue to pray for you along your Christian journey. God bless you, Oliver, on your journey. So did you hear Nana and Grandad's advice about looking for the good in everything? Becoming a junior soldier is one step on a fantastic journey following Jesus and aiming to live the best life that you can. Do you think you're ready for that step? Yes. Have you learned all about becoming a junior soldier? Who taught you all about becoming a junior soldier? Auntie Christine. Auntie Christine. So you're ready to become a junior soldier. I know that you've learned all about the junior soldier's promise. And Nana and Grandad mentioned the promise, didn't they, when they were talking to you just a few moments ago. Have you decided to keep the promise? Yes. Good. That's a very important and a very good decision to make. Some people watching this won't know about the junior soldiers promise. Others became junior soldiers a long time ago and I know that they would appreciate a reminder. And so I'm very pleased to hear that you're going to read the promise for us. So would you be able to do that now, Oliver? I promise that Jesus is my saviour from sin 
I have asked him to forgive my sins and I will trust him to keep me good. By his help, I will be his loving and obedient child. I will help others to follow him. I promise to pray, to read my Bible and to lead a life that is clean in thought, word and deed. I will not use anything that my injure, may injure my body or my mind, including harmful drugs, alcohol and tobacco. Thank you very much, Oliver, for reading that so well. Would you like to sign the promise now? Thank you very much, Oliver. So you've learnt all about becoming a junior soldier. You've made the promise. You've read the promise out and now you've signed it. And so now all that's left to do is for me to officially make you a junior soldier. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say a few words. Here we go. Are you ready? In the name of the Lord Jesus, whom we love and serve, I now receive Oliver Keats as a junior soldier of the Cardiff Canton Corps of the Salvation Army. And now your dad is going to give you your junior soldier's badge. <laughs> That's lovely. That's very good. Welcome, Oliver, to the ranks of Cardiff Canton Junior Soldiers. As well as the people here and those who recorded messages, I know that there will be lots of people watching who will want to support and encourage you on your journey as you follow Jesus and work for God. And so we're very pleased to welcome you. And uh, Chrissy is going to pray for you just now. So let's pray. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for our newest junior soldier, Oliver. He is a gift from you, and for that we are truly grateful. Thank you for his questions and for his eagerness to learn more about you and the history of the Salvation Army. Lord, we know this relationship is new and exciting for him. We thank you for his family and extended family who will love and support him throughout his journey. We pray that when Oliver has an opportunity to share his love for you, that he is brave and proud to tell his friends all about you. Thank you for the honour I have had to help Oliver through his junior soldier classes. And I pray for the core here at Canton that we will support, encourage and pray for Oliver as he grows as a Christian. As it says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Acknowledge him in all we do. He will direct our path. Oliver. Keep being the amazing little boy you are. Keep trusting in Jesus and keep asking questions. You have just read in your junior soldier promise that with God's help, you can achieve amazing things. I pray that you will always remember that. Lord, thank you again for Oliver. Amen. 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 Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, two weeks before Easter. Next week we will follow Jesus into Jerusalem as he is welcomed by crowds singing Hosanna and carpeting his way with palm fronds. But Easter is of such central importance to the Gospel writers that they don't leave the telling of it until Palm Sunday. 
we have a word in English for something which is of central importance. We say that it is crucial. The word comes from the Latin crux, meaning cross. Crucial literally means cross-shaped. The cross of Christ is so crucial, it is of such central importance that the gospel writers take every opportunity to point us to it, long before they arrive at Palm Sunday. Easter is everywhere in John's Gospel. Back in chapter 2, Jesus was talking about his death and resurrection when he said, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. In chapter 3, Jesus points to the cross when he says that the Son of Man must be lifted up. And there had been cross-shaped trouble brewing for a while. In chapter 5, the authorities look for ways to kill Jesus. They very nearly stoned him to death in John chapter 8, and did the same again in chapter 10. These are all pointers to the road Christ will take. This way of the cross doesn't seem like the kind of route which anybody would choose, and yet Jesus says to you and me, take up your cross and follow me, because the cross is about letting go of everything in our life which prevents us from picking up the prize. God said through the prophet Isaiah, forget the former things, don't dwell on the past, see I'm doing a new thing, now it springs up. Don't you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Lent is about letting go. Forget the former things, don't dwell on the past. Take up your cross and follow the one who flung stars into space. Jesus is my Saviour, this I know, He has given peace to my heart. When my soul was burdened, filled full of woe, seeking from my sin to pass. Graciously He heard me when I prayed, drew me to His river side. There by faith I was, and so was saved, His blood was there for this week. As usual at 6pm this evening we have our prayer gathering and then this next Friday at 7pm we have our Zoom quiz night. Of course the following week is Holy Week and there will be a series of events. 
On Tuesday the 30th, there will be a YouTube presentation, a meditation featuring band music. Wednesday the 31st, Craig Keats is preparing an Easter meditation featuring songs, readings and music, and that will be on Zoom. Thursday the 1st, there will be a YouTube meditation featuring songs to music. And then on Good Friday, Major David will be leading a meeting on YouTube, and this will feature a presentation of Ron Nucky's play, Around the Cross. All those events will be at 7pm. And then on Easter Sunday at 10am, there will be an Easter morning service on YouTube. In core family news, we think of Sister Mary Adams, who has recently been admitted to hospital. And we continue to remember Jerry and Hilda Parsons, but I'm pleased to say that they are now recovering. We say congratulations to Nathan and Sean on the arrival of their new baby daughter, Anaira. And a very happy birthday to Major Reg Bat, who is 90 today. And finally, but by no means least, we say congratulations to Oliver Keats on his very special today, day today. Well done, Oliver. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the announcements. Here's another opportunity for us to give in our online offering. After the repeated threats against his life, Jesus stayed away from Jerusalem for a short time. But the way to new creation, the way of the cross, still beckoned. Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus was ill. Lazarus lived in Bethany, less than two miles from Jerusalem. The last time you went near there, they tried to stone you said his disciples. But he was determined to go. At every turn, Jesus chose the way of the cross, the way of letting go, the way of self-denial and sacrifice. By the time they were ready to set off, Lazarus had died and Jesus knew it. But Thomas said, let us also go that we may die with him. What did Thomas mean? Was this some dark humour? We'll come back to that. They buried me deep when I died But me, I don't remember They tell me that everyone cried I don't remember They sang a sad song as they marched me along They carried me high through the thick of the throng The old folk complained that the road was too long But me, I don't remember I expect they would pray and they'd preach But me, I don't remember 
and someone would make a long speech but me I don't remember I dare say they said they were sad I was dead and called down a blessing from God on my head and then they went home to be fitted and fed but me I don't remember I don't remember. You'll know the story. Lazarus was dead. Martha and Mary, the dead man's sisters, were there with lots of other mourners. Jesus was moved. He cried. They went to the tomb and Jesus asked for the stone sealing the entrance to be rolled away. Then he looked up and thanked God for listening. Lazarus, come out, he shouted, and out Lazarus shuffled, still wrapped up in strips of cloth. All of this before Palm Sunday is Easter writ large, not only the cross, here is the promise of resurrection too. As Lazarus earlier lay dead in the tomb, Jesus had said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Most Jewish people believe in resurrection, but it was just a doctrine, a belief about the far future, for the end of the age. It offered little comfort for Martha in her present grief. Jesus, however, brought that future into Martha's present and made it real. Resurrection, new life, new creation. Heaven was here and heaven was happening. Many people who saw this believed in Jesus. But for those who were determined to cling on to former things, it was difficult even to rejoice at raising the dead. The problem with Jesus, as the Jewish authorities saw it, wasn't that healing and raising the dead were not good things. The problem was that these signs and wonders were creating quite a stir. Jesus was attracting lots of followers. People might get carried away and think that this was the beginning of a popular rejection of Roman rule. The Jewish authorities knew that Roman retribution could be harsh and swift. Raising Lazarus was the last straw. So they called a meeting and Caiaphas, the high priest for that year, summed up the situation. It is better he said, that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. Oh, the irony! Our Gospel writer points out that because high priests were thought to be prophets, Caiaphas was prophesying God's purposes even without realising it. Jesus would indeed die for the people for all of God's people everywhere. And by his death, we could have life in all its fullness. This too is Easter writ large. Out of my darkness he called me Out of the depth of my night Out of the shadows of sorrow Into the life of his life Out of my darkness he called me 
a reading from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honour. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him.
At dinner parties, we should enjoy easy, edifying fellowship. This meal was given in honour of Jesus, and there was something to celebrate because Lazarus, the formerly dead man, was there. But there was tension in the air. Just a short walk away in Jerusalem, people were plotting to kill Jesus. And what was Mary thinking? Washing his feet with her hair. She would first have had to let her hair down, and even that would have appeared unseemly. Was this a kind of letting go, a sort of self-denial, as she risked the wrath of onlookers and her own reputation? That perfume was costly, worth a year's wages. Nard was extracted from the roots of a plant grown far away in northern India, round the foothills of the Himalayas. Was she, perhaps, giving all she had in this act of devotion to Jesus? Everything about this supper foreshadowed Easter. It was not long before the Last Supper. Perhaps we should call this supper the penultimate supper. Mary wiped the feet of Jesus. The Greek word sounds like ekmaso. A few days later, Jesus would wipe ekmaso, the feet of the disciples at the Last Supper. And Judas was there, using pious sounding words about poor people in order to condemn this loving act. A few days later, Judas would feature again at the Last Supper, leaving as night fell to do the deal which would carry Jesus to the cross. Jesus spoke of his own burial too. The translation is ambiguous. It's not clear whether Jesus was saying that Mary herself had intended this perfume for his burial. It may well have been that this was God's meaning given to her selfless act. Could it be that just as Caiaphas had prophesied without even knowing it, so too had Mary? And what about Thomas? When eventually the risen Christ first appeared to the disciples, Thomas had not been there. Unless I see the nail prints, unless I put my finger in the marks and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So Jesus appeared again. Thomas believed and out of this doubter's mouth came the most explicit declaration of Christ's true identity in the whole of John's Gospel. My Lord and my God, Thomas said. The resurrection had revealed truth to Thomas. But could it be that truth was what Thomas spoke on that earlier occasion when Jesus planned to go to Bethany and the disciples sought to dissuade him? Do you remember? Let us also go that we may die with him. Perhaps it really was dark humour, but perhaps also, like Caiaphas, Thomas didn't quite know what he was saying. If Mary had not fully understood the significance of her actions, perhaps Thomas too didn't realise. But this is still God's truth. This is the foolishness of God which is wiser than the world's wisdom. Going with Jesus, wherever Jesus goes, even to the cross, is the way to life in all its fullness. To let go of those things which the world would prize, whether they be costly perfumes or reputation, political expediency or even life itself. This is what it means to walk the way of the cross and to die with him. 
Two weeks ago we let Paul have the last word and we would do well to hear the same words again. My aim, says Paul, is to know him, to experience the power of his resurrection, to share in his sufferings and to be like him in his death and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Here is our benediction. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. <laughs>